Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games From Scratch with some more news from GDC and also from GTC. Yes, there are two developer conferences going on right now about sort of overlapping topics, game development and graphics and AI. One is NVIDIA's GTC conference, the other one is the game developer conference and this news came out in, well, both of them. Yeah, it's confusing. But anyways, we're talking today again about NVIDIA's Omniverse. Now, if you've never heard of Omniverse before, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail because I've already done a video that goes hands-on, shows you how you set it up, how it works, and what it's all about. But basically, you can think of NVIDIA's Omniverse as being glue. It is a glue between various different pipelines. It's built on top of Pixar's USD or Universal Scene Description format, I believe that acronym stands for. Uh, and it basically allows you to have interchange between various different applications. In this video, I go hands-on and show how how this works. So for example, you start from one of the USD applications that ships as part of it called Create. And what I do is I take this scene from Create and I import it into Unreal Engine. Then to go one step even kind of cooler in this video, I take this level from Unreal Engine and you see here it's normal level, everything else going on. And what I do is I export it out to USD. So you, again, this is a one way in from USD and then a different load level and out to um, Unreal Engine and back into USD and the Omniverse plugin. Now, Omniverse is also something created for making tools on top of it, such as you see with Create here. But what it allows you to do is basically have this end to end interchange of data. So I can bring an Unreal Engine scene into this tool, work collaboratively in the cloud with people on setting up things we like. We want to change the lighting, for example, in a scene. We can do so. And those changes will actually be preserved back into uh, Unreal Engine or whatever connector you are working with. So it is kind of, again, this super powered glue between all of our content creation tools. Uh, so again, I have this video if you want to check it out, learn a little bit more about what's going on but today they announced some improvements specifically targeted at game developers so this is from the nvidia newsroom they launched omniverse for developers a powerful and collaborative game creation environment that's not really true in a way because it's still the same thing it's been available for a while but they've announced some definite improvements on top of it um, so if you're looking to create your own pipeline and so on we have a number of nice announcements to work with in the omniverse uh, environment so we've got new features that came on board for game developers including omniverse audio to face which i actually will cover a little bit more in this video but i'm going to do a hands a follow-up video on that at some point in the future the omniverse nucleus cloud which is very nice part of omniverse is actually setting up up a Python based server uh, that all of the files are hosted on and so on. And that's the part that's a pain in the butt. So coming forward, there is going to be this Nucleus Cloud so you can host it on their servers. Uh, that is a nice development there. Unfortunately, that is early access and I do not have early access. So I cannot demonstrate that in action. But this Omniverse Nucleus Cloud should in theory make setting up and using the Omniverse a lot simpler, especially if you do not want to host your own servers. On top of that, they also added Omniverse Deep Search, which is very cool if you have a large asset library because what it allows you basically do is use machine learning to identify what your 3d models are and search them accordingly we'll see a little bit more about that in action and then also of relevance to game developers there is now an unreal engine 5 omniverse connector so if you're working with unreal engine 5 you can use omniverse just like i showed you in that video with unreal engine 4 so connectors are kind of the heart of how things communicate between omniverse sometimes one way sometimes both ways we'll look at some of the options out there when it comes to connectors in just a second as well uh, so that's the big thing about today's announcements. I kind of walked through a lot of the technology behind it. Um, it is going to probably be used in more and more game engines going forward, although there is an interesting development in that regard as well concerning the Unity game engine. We'll get back to that. So the key components that were updated for game developers specifically are the audio to face, this AI powered application that enables character artists to generate high quality facial animations from just an audio file. Audio face now supports full facial animation and artists will have the ability to control the emotion of the performance as well. The cool thing with audio to face is there's actually um, integration with Unreal Engine rigs and with their MetaHumans project. So you can just basically facially animate using machine learning and you just send it uh, an audio file to make that work. This here is audio to face. Again, I'm gonna probably do hands-on with this on its own because it is really cool technology. I'll probably do a follow-up in the future, but basically take a character rig, you upload an audio file, the neural net figures it out and does the facial blends. Uh, that is some really cool stuff. Again, it does have uh, integration with um, various different applications out there, but specifically Unreal Engine uh, 4 connectors are available as well as you can make it work with a MetaHuman 
characters. And I'm assuming now that there is an Unreal Engine 5 connector, you'll be able to use it that way as well. So if you need to do uh, voice syncing and you just want to actually, instead of having to animate it, have it come straight from audio clips, well, that is what Audio to Face is all about. The next new announcement is the Nucleus Cloud. Unfortunately, if you click on this, what you are going to find is it is, you, you need to have an NVIDIA developer account. You have to sign up for it using this form and you've got to wait for them to get back and then you'll be able to host your stuff on the cloud. Unfortunately, once again, uh, I do not have access. I cannot demonstrate you hands-on, but this is actually kind of removes one of the biggest pain barriers for trying out Omniverse yourself because you basically just host it on their servers. No idea what this is ultimately going to cost, how it's going to work, etc. Uh, but it is now available in early access. So if you do want to go ahead and sign up for that, uh, the registration is available here. Sadly, I cannot yet demonstrate that to you. Next up, we have Deep Search. Uh, this is actually really quite cool. Uh, it enables you to basically have artificial intelligence figure out what you're untagged, untagged. So no human intervention required, although you can tag things yourself, your 3D models. So you can actually see a demonstration of it in action right here. And uh, this is Activision using it. As you see, they've got 3D models in place. They search for them. It can figure out from machine learning what the tires are, for example, in the scenes. And then boom, you can just drop them into your uh, application of choice here you can see it's using the create app that is built on top of the omniverse platform but that could have just as easily been uh so example i think this example right here showcases oh no this goes into machinima but i thought one of these went directly into unreal engine but basically it is a ai based interface over top of your 3d model repository that uses computer vision algorithms etc to figure out what your assets are so then you can search for them by description this is some really sci-fi level stuff to be honest uh and could be a huge boon for people with large uh, asset libraries that aren't necessarily well documented or tagged at this moment in time. And finally, we get into the new connector. The big one, obviously, is that Unreal Engine 5 is now connected. On top of that, uh, here are some of the connection applications out there. You're going to have to see that Blender is on there, as is 3D Studios Max and Maya. So you can use kind of this as the kind of universal format. You don't need to mess with FBX files or use native formats or anything like that anymore. You could just basically work in USD, which is pretty nice. So if you got one person that's working in 3D Studios Max, another one working in Blender, Blender, theoretically, they can cooperate. Now, in reality, how well does it work? Hard to say. You're going to see there's other applications coming online, such as the clothing designer, Marvelous Designer, used in a number of games. Houdini is coming on fi on fi uh, online at some point in the future. There is Photoshop support. Rhino is supported. Uh, Substance 3D is supported. Uh, it's saying here Unreal Engine 4 is supported, but uh, Unreal Engine 5 should be as well. A number of different applications, Cinema 4D, they're all on board with connectors to the Omniverse. As I mentioned earlier on, you can also build apps on top of audio over on top of Omniverse. You could actually create your own game engine or toolings on top of Omniverse itself. Uh, they did audio to face that we saw earlier on is built on top of that. Another one that we've kind of, we've seen it in a couple of these vi videos is Create which is a composition and rendering tool uh, for viewing USD scenes. You can use it collaboratively. Um, it's, it's definitely a neat program. So there's a number of applications that are actually built on top of the Omniverse as well. Uh, and uh, I can imagine that there will be more coming soon. So this is just a straight up viewer for USD files. Uh, you can use this again online in the cloud with multiple different people. And the cool thing that they announced uh, that isn't part of this, uh, but you're also going to be able to use this via a single link and GeForce Now. So their cloud-based uh, rendering solution, a uh, gaming solution, which I actually subscribe to and it's really great. Um, it's going to work with this as well. So even if someone doesn't have like a really cutting edge GPU on their machine, they can potentially collaborate with you, view your 3D models and so on using the GeForce Now service. That's another announcement that came from GTC, however, nothing on the GDC side of things. Now I did say something interesting. If we look at the connectors that are available, you're gonna notice someone missing. And that is starting with you and ending with Nidity. Uh, so Unity is not on there. But when I covered this a while back, so when I first did that video, this was back in uh, July of 2021, I actually mentioned that there was a Unity connector in the works. Because quite frankly, there was a Unity connector in the works. As you can see captured from these comments, the original quote was, connectors are available for many existing tools like Revit, SketchUp, 3D Studios, Max Rhino, Maya, Houdini, Unreal, Unity, and so on. And also it says the ones done, not done yet, Houdini, Blender, and Unity are the ones I'm most interested in. But anyways, so those were still in progress, but it was announced in July 2021 there was a Unity importer 
in the works, in their documentation. Let's hold to the same documentation right now, and this is the same quoted line. And you're going to see connectors are available for many existing tools like Revit, SketchUp, 3D Studios Max, Rhino, so on, so forth. Unreal, Blender. Uh, okay, so Unity has been dropped. So I do not know if that means that Unity and um, Omniverse are never going to play well together. I don't know if it's just, I, I, I literally just don't know. All I know is earlier it said it was coming. Now it's not even mentioned at all. So if you are a Unity developer, I wouldn't expect to see any Omniverse support anytime soon, which is a bit unfortunate. So anyways, that is today's update. Again, coming from GDC and GTC, the fact that there's two conferences for developers with one letter difference between them running literally at the exact same time is next level stupid. But anyways, that's the way it is. Coming from GDC and GTC, a number of updates on NVIDIA's Omniverse. If you have never checked out Omniverse in the past, I do recommend doing so. If you want to see specifically what it's for about game developers, I'll have this link down below as well to kind of break down how you can use it for game development. Of course, this technology is all based around NVIDIA software. So if you're on uh, Team AMD for your development tools, you're going to probably want to look elsewhere. Now, cool thing is if they do get that cloud stuff working, um, you'll be able to host this and get it up running a lot easier. I don't know if I actually covered the process of running Omniverse. I can just tell you, if you run into some pain points, yeah, don't be shocked. It was a pain to set this up. So the whole Nucleus cloud thing could be a nice big development. And again, if you want to learn more about Omniverse, this video does go hands-on. It does show you why at least I am so excited about this technology. It could finally bring the world where you can just work in what tools you want. It also would make the uh, path to move between various different game engines so much easier uh, because I've done tutorials in the past on getting content out of Unreal Engine, out of Unity to work in other game engines. There is nothing that holds a candle to the quality of the output that you see. Basically, getting something out of uh, Unreal Engine into uh, USD format via NVIDIA Omniverse, the stuff that comes out looks exactly like what it began. And the cool thing is you can also go back in. So Omniverse can also kind of give you a little bit of freedom from the platforms you are working with, which also has me a bit excited. So some nice announcements about Omniverse, just <laughs> unfortunate about the whole GDC and GTC literally at the same time thing. Hopefully you found that useful. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.